السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم in the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful الحمد لله all praise is indeed due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله blessings and salutations upon the messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم his household his companions may Allah bless them all and bless every one of us آمين my beloved brothers and sisters, we all want from Allah so many things and we would love it if Allah were to give us the best of this world and the next. Is that not correct? May Allah bless us with the best of this world and the next. Ameen. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار. O Allah, grant us the goodness of this world, the goodness of the hereafter, and save us from the punishment of hellfire. That's a beautiful du'a. We should be making it on a regular basis. But we have a major problem when we ask Allah and we receive from Allah. At times we get from Him without us having asked Him. So many things we have right now, we've never ever asked Allah to bless us with, but from His mercy, He's blessed us with those things. He's given us so much and that's why He tells us, that you should ponder over the favors of Allah upon you and you should thank Allah for those favors. When you ask Allah and He gives you a blessing, that is something good. But not every time is the giving from Allah a blessing. And that's why we say it's important for us to go through the lessons of the Quran. Today I want to go through something very, very important. When Allah has blessed you and He gives you whether it is wealth or power or health or whatever else it may be, when Allah has favored you above others. Remember, when you came onto the earth, you were all the same. We came naked, we were babies, we were crying, we were unclothed, and thereafter someone on earth clothed us. Someone fed us. We were helpless. And Allah says, you know what? We're going to return you back to the soil. They're going to have to take off your clothes once again, put you in a shroud. And if you're lucky, subhanallah, they will bathe you and they will bury you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a good death. But if you look at one of the examples that Allah gives us in Surah Al-Qasas, it is that of a very wealthy man from the time of Musa alayhi salam and from his own people. Inna Qarun kana min qawmi Musa. Indeed, Qarun was from the people of Musa alayhi salam. He was from the nation of Musa alayhi salam. Now, what was his story? Allah blessed him with so much, but he didn't understand and he refused to acknowledge where it came from and what Allah wanted from him. So what did Allah do as a result? Allah punished him, but he had everything. This man had everything. You know, if I were to look at someone and they are so happy on earth and we would say, wow, what doesn't this man have? Right or wrong? The only thing lacking is you need to worship Allah. You need to thank Allah and understand his plan. So what was the plan of Allah? And what is the plan of Allah? I want to know it because I don't want my blessings to be snatched away. I don't want the gifts and favors Allah has given me to be the means of me being punished. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَبَغَى عَلَيْهِمْ This man, what did he do? He transgressed against his own people. How do you transgress against your own people? When Allah gives you, first thing that happens you become arrogant and boastful. You want to boast and brag about what you have. Subhanallah. You want to pretend like you are bigger than everybody else, but you don't realize it's the favor of Allah that's dripping things to you. When you didn't have a job, then subhanallah, you were humble. Now that you have a nice big salary and you don't know how long it's going to last, you suddenly became a boastful person. You want to show off. Allah says, when I've given you, don't show off. Don't show off. Don't be boastful. Don't think you're haughty. Don't think you're bigger than everybody else. You're going to need what Allah wants you to need. The people around you, Allah put them there to test you. Nothing else. 
Allah put around you the poor, the downtrodden. Allah gave you so that you can do something with whatever Allah has given you. You can use what Allah has given you to earn your hereafter. Subhanallah. So listen to what Allah says. It's very, very interesting because this man had a lot and Allah says he became boastful. He was a show off. Now, if someone is driving their Porsche, may Allah grant us ease. It doesn't mean they're automatically boastful, right? I see the youngster smiling at me here because he knows, hey, I'm going to be driving my Porsche very soon and I'll come to the masjid with it. Does that make me an arrogant or boastful person? No. Remain humble, greet people, help them, be a good person, give the warmth to the people, fulfill their rights of responding to the salam or of fulfilling the salam, of going out when they're in need, be a part of the community and society, not from a lofty position, but from the position that we are all equals. So you can drive your Porsche, inshallah. May Allah grant it to him and to every one of us. So my beloved brothers and sisters, when Allah has blessed you with good clothing, good perfume, that doesn't mean you're boastful. Don't ever look at someone who comes with the best and latest vehicle and say, this guy's boasting. He's not boasting. It's your heart that's making you think that. But did he ignore? Did he become hurtful? Was he abusive? If that was the case, then yes, indeed, there is a problem here of boastfulness. Allah says, subhanallah, إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ قَوْمُهُ لَا تَفْرَحْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْفَرِحِينَ His people told him, hey listen, stop being boastful. Allah does not like people who are boastful. Allah does not like people who are arrogant. They are haughty. Allah blessed you, now humble. Calm yourself down, you got it. You got everything, we know you got it. MashaAllah, may Allah bless every one of us. The same applies to anything else, not just wealth. Sometimes Allah's given you good looks. It happens to the women as well. She knows she's pretty. Subhanallah. Allah grant us ease. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of us. That shouldn't make you think that you're a cut above the rest. No. Someone else might be far closer to Allah than you are and you don't know. You're just addressing them in a very, very belittling way. Belittling a friend of Allah would actually beckon the punishment of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So his people told him, لا تفرح إن الله لا يحب الفريحين Farah in the Arabic language actually means happiness. And it is used in a context where that happiness gets to a degree where it becomes an arrogance and a haughtiness and a boastfulness. That is what is being mentioned in this particular context when it comes to the story of Qarun. وَابْتَغِ فِي مَا آتَاكَ اللَّهُ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ To me, this verse is absolutely important. Allah is telling him through his own people that whatever Allah has given you, use it in order to earn the hereafter and to build your palace of the hereafter. When Allah gave you power, for example, use it in such a way that you earn your akhirah. It's not going to last forever. When Allah has given you any form of power, be it physical power or be it the authority over others, you might be a father in the home, be a good father. Use that position to earn your Jannah. Don't become a, a little Qarun in your own home. Because in our homes, trust me, there are some Firauns, there are some little Pharaohs. The way they operate in the house as though they have no connection with Allah and they are not answerable to Allah in any way. My brother, my sister, you are answerable to Allah for absolutely everything. Don't be too haughty. Your children want something, subhanallah. Remember, sometimes Allah is watching you. He gave you those children. They are actually His creation. He owns them. When a person passes away, we say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. I've said this so many times. That is proof enough to actually convey the message that we all belong to Allah. We don't belong to each other here. Where was your child 15 years before that child was born? With Allah. One year before the child was born? With Allah. Allah gave you and Allah is going to take away. So Allah says, you know what? When the child wants something, you are only a facilitator for what is halal that the child would like. But the child is an independent child. Your son, your daughter would like to achieve something. Say for example, and this is happening more and more now, they want to marry someone. And just because you have some idea that 
I don't want to marry people from the other side of the river or another town or another country or another culture. And therefore what happens? You think you can just reject. You can. You can just reject. But you're answerable to Allah. He will come for you. Subhanallah. He says there will be chaos in your own home. We will destroy things for you if you don't turn back to us. Don't be a racist. Don't be a person who thinks that he is above the rest. Don't belittle people because of their complexion or because of their accent or because of where they come from or where they were born. Not at all. We are all the children of Adam and Adam was from the dust and the soil. Kulluna min Adama wa Adama min Turab. Subhanallah. May Allah grant us goodness. So it's just a duty. Qarun was told, whatever Allah gave you, use it to build your hereafter. How many of us have wealth, but we've never used it to build our hereafter. We're using it to enjoy the few temporary days on this earth. Does that mean I shouldn't enjoy? It means you can enjoy, but not at the expense of your hereafter. You don't enjoy with haram. You have clean fun. You make sure that you have done that which is not in the displeasure of Allah. Simple message. And this is why when, whenever we have something, say for example, you have qualified as a doctor, you have qualified as a paramedic, you have qualified as whatever else it may be, any other field, a plumber, whatever it might be. Remember that particular field, you must use it in order to build your hereafter as well. Make sure you serve the people as well. Yes, you might earn a bit of money, but there must be a portion that you have set aside in order that you will earn your hereafter. Go out. Make sure that you have served people. You have been good to them and kind to them because that is how you are going to build your hereafter. What's the point of having a million rands a month, for example, and I've got nothing in the hereafter? The more you get, the more you should give. That's why zakat is compulsory. That's because Allah wants you to give a portion that He gave you. Subhanallah. Allah wants you to give a portion He gave you. But do you know what is a real winner? That which your heart can give over and above zakat is truly you. Did you hear what I just said? If you fulfill your farad salah, your fulfillment is done for Allah. Allah has given you much more than what He's asked you. But if you are to now engage in sunnah and nafil and extra, that's you and Allah. That's now something, that's now the love of Allah. That's what it is. So if you just give two and a half percent, good, alhamdulillah, you did your duty. It's your zakat that's done and that too should be done with humility, humbleness. You don't just throw the money. There's my two and a half percent. It works out to two million. So that you know what that means, how much I'm worth. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. In the eyes of Allah, we're all the same. If that poor man wasn't there, your zakat would go down the drain. Subhanallah. So don't ever be arrogant. And this is why we say when you give more than the two and a half percent, now you're talking. I know of non-Muslims, other faiths, they end up giving 10% and more and they willingly give it. Subhanallah. They come and put it in, the, in, their, in their own places of worship. Subhanallah. I'm thinking if that was the case with our masajid, we would have had super masjids, mashallah. Super masjids. Imagine 10% of everybody's wealth here goes towards the, you know, the, 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 the cause, the good cause through the masjid. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Allah is asking you for very little. Allah says, use it. Use it to earn your paradise. وَبْتَغِي فِي مَا آتَاكَ اللَّهُ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ and because Allah still wants you to enjoy His favors upon you on earth, He tells you, And don't ever forget your portion from this world. Which means strike a balance. Don't be so much on the right that you don't spend what Allah gave you and don't be so much on the left that you're not interested in this world at all. We put you on earth. You have family, you have children, you have those around you. You need to spend time with them, some quality time. At times you may want to go out on a holiday. It's not wrong on condition that you did your salah and you ate halal food and you did not participate in that which was displeasing to Allah. You see the point? Subhanallah. So Allah says, don't forget 
your portion of this world. But remember, it's just a little portion. Be kind to people. Make people feel welcome and Allah will welcome you on the day of judgment. Give that warmth to others and Allah will give you the warmth on the day of judgment. You'll be recognized by the angels. This was a man. We used to write all his rewards. Look at Yunus alayhi salam. It is said that when he was in the belly of the fish, the angels said, Oh Allah, a man who used to praise you every single day with a beautiful voice. And we heard that praise coming and we registered his reward. The same voice is coming to you today from a place where he is in distress. And Allah removed him from the distress. Why? Because, Ta'arraf ilallahi fil rakha'i ya'arifka fil shidda. Get close to Allah during days of ease. Get acquainted with Allah during days of ease. And Allah will get close to you when you are going through your days of difficulty. May Allah be with us. So, look at that balance. لا تنسى نصيبك من الدنيا Then we have the rest of the verse. وَأَحْسِنْ كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكَ Do good to others just like Allah did good to you. Allah was kind to you. Be kind to others. Many human beings, Allah is kind to them, they are cruel to others. Even in their own homes. People are actually, like I said earlier, creating disaster in their own homes, thinking that I'm going to achieve a gold medal perhaps for being so manly that everyone in the home fears me to the degree that they, they are shaking and they are psychologically unwell. That's not a man. A man is he who can control his temper, not one who can vent it. Vent we all can, we are all men. Subhanallah. A man is he, the strong one is he, who can control himself, not the one who can out-wrestle the others. You want to show me how powerful you are, how strong you are. You want to go on about how many punch bags you've created holes in, subhanallah. I'll tell you those were weak punch bags, come to my one. Subhanallah. But all of that is irrelevant. The greatest relevance is when you see a man strong and he's sitting in front of Allah, so quiet, so humble. And he doesn't just get angry for any small thing. He's not irked by little things, subhanallah. That's a real man, subhanallah, rabbil alameen. You know your capacity, but you're in control. Allah grant us goodness. Ahsin kama ahsan Allahu ilayk. Do good to others like Allah has done good to you, subhanallah. When Allah favors you with something, give others the favor. Allah gave you reason to smile. You give others reason to smile. Look at your life. What do you have? Reach out to others with it. What does this mean? This means the building of my Jannah is closely connected to how I treat the other creatures of Allah. How do I make my family members feel? My neighbors, those in my masjid, my community, those whom I interact with, whom Allah placed in my path. When you interact with someone, Allah chose that you're going to interact with this person. Even when you're just walking in the public, in a public place like a mall or anywhere else, and you come across a person or you bump a person, you bump into someone, or even just passing by, all those people were carefully selected by Allah to be at that place at that time in order to pass you, in order for you to seize the opportunity to plug in a quick reward so that perhaps you could earn Jannah opportunities my brothers and sisters here is the most powerful point for today everything that happens in your life and every one that you come across is an opportunity from Allah for you to pack away a few rewards if only but you understood I'm standing here in front of you subhanallah we are here in front of each other it's our chance we, we are benefiting each other. Perhaps we can say a dua for each other. Perhaps, who knows, you might make a dua for me without me knowing. Subhanallah. That was between you and Allah. What did you do? You just packed away a few rewards. But you could have it the other way around. You could be sitting and saying, who does this guy think he is? And what does he think he's saying? And maybe he's speaking on me. And maybe he's this. All those are dirty thoughts from shaitan. Did you earn anything by that? Not at all. You rather earn the other way around. I rather make a mistake thinking that a bad person is good than to make a mistake thinking a good person is bad because the loss would be mine. Simple. So 
every opportunity you get to earn a reward, earn it. Because you know what? When you die, you will die with a smile. How many times have we seen people and while we're enshrouding them or just after they've passed on and others would say, Subhanallah, you know that man had such a beautiful smile on his face. That's what they would say. Subhanallah. In the eyes of Allah, that calmness was just a message for all of us to say, he has already gone to Allah. What about you and I who are alive? What am I doing? Make peace with people. Learn to forgive. Learn to embrace. Learn to actually move forward and you will succeed. Ahsin kama ahsan Allahu ilayk. Do good, just like Allah did good to you. Forgive others. Allah will forgive you. And He has forgiven you. Learn to embrace. Learn to be a good person. Make life easy for others. And wallahi, the Almighty will make your hereafter easy for you. That's in the hadith. Subhanallah. You help someone on this planet and Allah will help you in the hereafter. That's what the hadith says. You create ease for someone on earth, Allah will create ease for you in this world and the next. That's a hadith. So this is why, Ahsin kama ahsan Allahu ilayk. وَلَا تَبْغِ الْفَسَادَ فِي الْأَرْضِ And don't cause chaos, corruption on earth. Don't sin on earth. Don't hurt others. Do not do bad things on earth. Don't leave behind a bad legacy. If you leave a bad legacy, what will happen? You are the one to lose. And it actually will continue after your death. If others have followed your bad example, you will continue receiving the sin for that. May Allah forgive us. Now what was the crime of this man? He did not do these things. He was arrogant. He used to belittle people. He had so much wealth, he never spent it on others. He only amassed it and amassed it and kept on counting it and counting it. That's why one of the short surahs that we know near the end of the Quran, Al-Humaza, Al-Lumaza, Wailun Likulli Humazati Lumaza. Who is the Humaza and the Lumaza? Alladi Jama'a Malan Wa'addada. The one who gathers money and keeps counting it. Hey, today I got this much. Right? Just count the notes again. Following morning, count the notes again. Just check. Hey, this, hey check, check, check. I got another pile there. Count it again. How many kilos is that of gold? Hey, how many grams more? Every day he's counting, counting, counting. Allah says he thinks his wealth is going to create an everlasting life for him. Yahsabu anna malahu akhladahu. Kalla, never ever. He is also going to die. He better spend while he is alive. When you get, give. When you get, give. When you get, give more and more and more. The more you give, the more you. You get Adama Unfiq alayk. Allah says, Spend, O son of Adam, and then I will spend on you. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Have you heard what Allah said? You want there's a there's an ingredient, there's a way, there's a method. What is it? Spend on others. If you want, spend on others. But man can't do that. Hey, I want. I got 200. Let me just keep it. 200 is not gonna get to four. Give out 50, check how you're going to get another 300. Give out another 20, 50, 40. Give, give, subhanallah. Manaka samalun min sadaqa. The Prophet ﷺ says, no wealth has ever been depleted because of a charity that was given. Allah's given more and more and more. Subhanallah. This is why we say these are powerful words. Powerful words. You want to know how to be happy? Make others happy. Allah will make you happy. Qarun's sin was he had and had. Allah says he never spent it and he kept on counting it and checking it. You know what Allah says we did? And I'm going to end on this note. Allah says, we opened the earth and allowed the earth to swallow him and his wealth and everything in his home. And when the people got up in the morning, they said, where's this man? Where's his big palace? Where's all his wealth? It's gone. Where's it gone? Deep down into the earth. It's all disappeared. Because it was worth nothing. Allah wanted to give an example to all of us to say, if you're not going to use something and spend it in the right path, do you know what's going to happen? Allah will take it away and He will punish you as a result because you didn't even fulfill the little that He wanted you to fulfill. I hope that these few words have reminded myself and yourselves to be good, not to be arrogant, to be kind, to spend and to prepare for the day that we're going to meet with Allah by packing away as many good deeds as we can. Firstly, by worshipping Allah the way He wants us to worship. And secondly, by reaching out to everyone around us, starting with our family members with a simple good word that we utter, respectful words. We keep away words that are hurtful, that would pierce the heart and cause pain to 
it. Those words, when we stay away from them for the sake of Allah, Wallahi, we earn the pleasure of Allah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.